This wall hanging was made from air dried clay for my daughter who just moved into a new house and she was looking for something that was a little different in the gray silver tones that she could hang on her wall. So I created this piece for her. So my name is Peg. I call my channel Two All Crows Mixed Media. I like to experiment in a lot of different formats across the mixed media world. If you like that, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell will of course let you know when I upload additional content. And those thumbs up help promote my channel and help YouTube to know that you enjoy my content. So to get started, the air dry clay, I just warmed it up in my hand and rolled it out into a thin layer and to get the imprint and I am utilizing flowers I laid a stencil over the top of the clay rolled it with my marble rolling pin pulled that stencil up utilized a square cookie cutter to cut that square into the shape that I was looking for. This was inspired by a Dan Terrell video where he actually created all of his um, stamps that he used to stamp each one of his clay pieces. He created those himself. I am improvising and utilizing the stencils I have on hand a cookie cutter to get my square shape and then I am going to add some wire into the project so I've taken his project and kind of made it my own if you will but I'll put the link to his video down below so these are the squares that I wound up with and I'm going to set those aside and let those air dry. I let them air dry for a week because I am a weekend warrior. I am in my shop on the weekends only. I have a full-time job, so that's how it works out for me. And the air dry clay, I think it 24 hours would probably have done it. But they are all nice and dry now. And I'm going to clean the edges with some fine sandpaper just to get rid of any little nodules, knobs that were created when I pulled that cookie cutter off. And they're not all a perfect uniform square, but that's okay. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking for perfect. I think perfect is kind of boring. I like the, the kind of handmade, rugged look if you will i found this sheet of plywood in my shop sanding down the edges of that to avoid any splinters when i'm working with it but i'm just getting it kind of smoothed out and now i'm going to tape tape off those edges because i I want to protect the back. I, I like the back of my projects to look as neat and nice as the front. So I think that comes from my jewelry fabricating years. I want to keep paint from dripping over the back of that. So that's what I'm, that's why that tape is on the back. And now I'm just lining up my pieces, choosing my best six. Our best nine, I can't even count. And now I'm marking spots to drill holes in this plywood. And I wet my wire to wind through those holes. And then I'm going to create a wire piece at the top to hang it from the wall. So let me go off to my drill press and I have those holes complete. I have drill press 
in the other part of my shop. You can use a drill. You could probably punch through, uh, if you're using chipboard, you can punch through that with an awl, a screwdriver, whatever works for you. Now I'm just going to position these once again. And I'm using a tacky, clear tacky glue to glue them onto my board. Now I have them all glued down. I'm going to just stick, stick this book over the top of them to make sure that they're all connected with the plywood and we'll let that dry. Now I want to test the color. She wanted gray and silver. So I want to determine if I want to go with the silver on the bottom and highlight with the gray or if I want to go gray on the bottom and highlight with the silver. So I have two, two or three extra tiles. So let's just test it. I'm going to start by coating this one with a Payne's gray. And I like that gray. It's very similar to the gray that she has in her home. It's her house is, has a blue-ish gray wall. And this will look very good on her light wall. And now the cutting the other with the silver. And let's just dry brush that silver onto the gray. And then I'll do the same dry brush the gray onto the silver and let's see which one works out better. And I thought I would take you through this test just so you could see how the, the difference is and maybe it will help you make a choice if you decide to do this project, whether you want to start with light and highlight with dark or start with dark and highlight with light or that's my thought process anyway. And I personally like the dark with the silver highlight better than I like the silver with the dark highlights. And that's what I'm going to go with. So let's get this whole thing coated down with a coat of that Payne's Gray. And I'm going to speed this up because we spent quite a bit of time just testing. So I think you get it. Then I'm making sure that I get the edges of that as well. And now for the the silver. I have some aluminum here and I can't remember where I picked this up. I don't know whether I picked it up in a craft store. It's been hanging around my shop for quite some time. I know that you can buy a same sheet of aluminum at the hardware store in the roofing department for flashing, but this is, you know, a pretty good size roll of aluminum and I'm just cutting off a little square and I'm going to create a leaf out of this aluminum. And it's easy to cut through. You can use just a regular pair of scissors. And I brought over um, my little piece of steel or my little block to pound on. I'm going to fold that in half. And once I get it folded into half, I'm going to just take a chasing hammer or a hammer and just right along the edge, just really hammer that in. 
because what we're creating here is the ridge of that leaf. And now with my scissors, I will cut the leaf shape. And now I have this pizza cutter because the aluminum is so thin, I can just roll this pizza cutter across that aluminum and create my, my little um, veins in the leaf. I have a chasing hammer that has that um, square edge that would have been better, but I can't find it. So I pulled out the pizza cutter to, to improvise. You can always find something to do what you need to do. And there is my little leaf out of aluminum. Now I'm just taking that uh, rolled or round um, screwdriver and just creating some texture in the leaves. Now that the backboard is dry or the Payne's Gray is dry, let's dry brush over the silver and give that some interest. And I'm just going to work with this, both colors, the Payne's Gray and the silver, until the piece looks the way I want it to look. So it is a process of dry brushing over, maybe going back with a little more of the Payne's Gray, dry brushing again, just getting it to the point where I'm happy with the way it looks. So it's a process. And once that dries, I have the holes, and now I'm going to come in with the silver coated wire. And this is just a craft wire, a silver coated copper. I have sterling silver in my shop, but that was way too expensive to, to utilize sterling silver on this. I think I would have liked the way it would have tarnished, but I'm, I'm going with the uh, craft wire here. So let's just cut a long piece of that and we'll wind it in and out of those holes. And to secure it, I am just taking my round pliers and twisting the end of that into a little spiral. I'm going to pull that down and secure it. Maybe lengthen it a little bit or pull it, stretch it out. I'm just going to wind in and out. And as I get it through those holes, I'm taking my plier and just kind of kinking it and twisting it to make it look messy and maybe a little archival, if you will, or old or aged. There we go. Now we're to the end. I'm just going to kink, kink some of that wire. I'm going to cut that off and spiral that other end to hold that in place. And I'm going to continue to play with this wire. I'm going to add some additional spi spirals. I'm going to add the little aluminum leaves that we created. I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom holes between the second and third row and pull that wire through. I'm 
that second half, I guess, of this of this piece of board. So let's get that done. And once that is complete, I am just making a big spiral. So I have a little wire rod here and I'm wrapping the silver wire around it, pulling that off and, and I am just going to add some little spirals kind of dangling off that wire throughout with maybe a little leaf hung on it and I'm just punching a little hole in the top of that leaf to hang that leaf. And get my spirals into place. And now to create the hanger, I'm going to take that big spiral that I created and thread that on a piece of wire to create that kind of messy looking hanger. If I can get it threaded. There we go. And then we'll secure that into place with some spirals on the front with leaves hanging from them. We have all of those aluminum leaves that we made. So let's get those attached and hanging. And hopefully my daughter will like this. I've shown her pictures along the way. But I think it's different. It's not what you would normally expect. Just putting a little piece of wire on each leaf and then twisting that wire around where I want to attach it. And I will continue with the leaves and here is the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you liked it. It's a little different than what I normally do, but I do like working with this air dry clay. I think there's lots of mixed media projects that we can get into with the air dry play. I hope you have enjoyed. You can find me other places along the web here. And once again, I just want to thank you for joining me, watching my video. Please subscribe and hit that thumbs up if you would. That helps my channel exponentially. And I love your comments. So thank you. I always read those. Try to respond. Bye for now.